Hey there, sports photographers. I know that photo editing is probably the least favorite part of the process for you sports photographers out there. But if there's one concept that you must learn and master, it should be cropping. So let's gear up and let's get started. Hey there again, everybody. I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my sports photography channel. For those of you who don't know me and are joining this program for the very first time, I am currently the director of content for USA Today Sports and I have been in the photojournalism industry for nearly 16 years and I want to help you become a better sports photographer. I come out with a new video and new topic monthly so you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you don't miss out. Today, I want to talk about photo editing. I know this is not the favorite part of the process for many. Heck, probably most all of you. And quite honestly, when I started out, I didn't really care for it. However, it is a very important part of your workflow. And mastering some of the basic editing techniques will help you become a better sports shooter. So let's talk about cropping. Why exactly do we crop our photos? Well, there are three main reasons for why we want to crop. The first reason is you want to crop for impact. The second reason, you want to crop for impact. And the third reason, that's right, you guessed it, you have to crop for impact. Okay, okay, so I was being a little bit dramatic there, but by the end of this video, I promise you, you'll understand why I was beating that point home. But for now, let's actually dive into some of the specifics. In an ideal situation, we can frame our photos perfectly each and every single time. However, we are sports photographers, not landscape or portrait photographers. Our subjects are fast moving and unpredictable. We have to sprint up and down the sidelines to keep up with the action. And we have to pan our cameras in order to follow the play. And with that, it's impossible to keep a perfectly level horizon at all times. Check out this sequence as I pan and follow the action from one end of the field to the other. Obviously, we know that playing fields aren't built on sharp angles or inclines, so we need to fix them. Doing so makes your photos seem a lot more impactful because the unnatural slope to your photos can appear jarring or disorienting to a viewer. Fixing horizons is simple. All you need to do is grab a corner of your crop tool and using a horizontal or vertical element in your background as a guide, rotate the frame until your photo is level. Of course, there are other times in your shoots we may just have fast action and you may simply misjudge your horizon. Again, we can fix that in post-processing. Here I have a slightly tilted frame from a NASCAR race. To fix the horizon, you need to select your crop tool, then draw a box anywhere in the frame. Now, if you hover over any one of the corners, you'll see you'll be able to grab and rotate the frame. Now, I'm going to try to line up my crop box with a background element. And in this case, I'm going to line it up against the safer barrier. And now to realign my crop box. And done. We have a perfectly level image. Now, let's take another example. This one is from a baseball game at Wrigley you'll notice from the wall in the background that this image is slightly tilted. So I'm going to once again draw my crop box, grab a corner, and align the frame with an element in the background. Perfect. And now on to the second big reason as to why we crop our photos, to remove distractions. Again, with fast moving action, it's impossible to be in the perfect position every time to have clean backgrounds. Additionally, with the randomness of sport, you're always going to have officials, umpires, coaches, or other players get in the way. One major goal of cropping is that you are going to remove these quote unquote distractions. These stray limbs or other players not directly in the play do only one thing in your photo, and that's to distract the attention of the viewer. So removing these distractions ultimately make your photos much, much, much more impactful. Here's that same photo I just flashed in the previous scene. As you can see, the player on the right is basically a white distracting blob. 
that takes away from the two players actually involved in the play. The fix? Just crop that dude out. So as you can see, I'm drawing a pretty tight crop box to knock out number 35. And all we're left with now is a great peak action photo with two players involved. And when I do undo that action, you see how distracting that player on the right really is. And now for a much more subtle example, I am going to show you this tennis photo. As you can see, there is the net cord in the frame on the bottom. There is also a bit of dead or negative space on the top of each frame. It might not seem like a big deal, but both of these together can take away from the player in the frame. So what I'm going to do is draw my crop box, and the first thing I'm actually going to do is level out the horizon. And I'm just using the logo in the background as my guide. And boom, there's the crop. And when I compare the before and after, you'll see what even such a small and minor action does to the frame. Now, a third example is going to be pretty subtle, just like this tennis one. But when you look at this photo, you'll see in the background there is a large blue Reynolds Wrap logo in the background. That doesn't quite blend in with the fans above. Another thing that bothers me about this photo are the legs growing out of the pitcher's crotch. I hate it when people grow a third leg, so I'm going to crop out all these elements. Once again, drawing my crop box and leveling it against a wall or background element, and centering and tightening up my crop. And there you go. Compare the before and after, and you'll see a pretty big difference. And now for the last major reason as to why we crop our photos. And yep, of course, you're right, you guessed it. The third and final reason as to why we want to crop our photos is to crop for impact. Maybe your photo is already a clean, isolated, and forceful picture. But you know how you can make it even more emotional, even more raw, and even more in your face? That's right, you can crop tighter and crop for impact. There is a lot of good stuff happening in this frame. But if, for example, you wanted to really highlight the fan reaction, you could bring in some of the edges so that a viewer is more focused on everything in the frame. Now, there's not really a right or wrong in this frame either, but if you really like the dirt being sprayed and the expressions on the players, you could go even tighter. As I zoom out and undo, you'll see what I'm talking about and see how much of a strong and forceful play it is when you crop in. But the zoomed out version is great too. Now one benefit of a cropped in photo is you could really, really see the intensity on the player's faces, like so. So anyways, that is it. That is my quick little tutorial, as well as an explanation as to why we crop, and specifically, why we crop for impact. We need to give our viewers a little bit of help, and by cropping, we give them a cleaner, more dynamic, more forceful, and interesting photo. When it comes to photo editing, mastering the art of cropping is the single biggest tool on how you could improve your sports photography. All that said, I will conclude this video by saying that cropping isn't a cure-all or master cheat code for sports photography. You still need to shoot with good technique by filling your frame as much as possible. You can't just sit 50 yards away with a 70 to 200 and expect to crop into that photo and expect any pixels left to work with you still need to think about how to best position yourself on the field to minimize background elements that you wouldn't be able to crop out easily. Anyways, if you enjoyed the content of this video, definitely hit the like button or leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you again for joining me today. I come out with new videos every single month, so definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so that you don't miss out when new content drops. Thanks again, and I can't wait to see you all again next time. Bye now.